awaiting the serve from Ellie Glock, Louisville's setter. Transfer from USC in her first year as the main starter, and right off the bat, Boston College scores cleanly through Grace Milligan. We talked about the production from the Boston College pin hitters. It's going to be so important for them to establish their middle early to open things up for those pin hitters. Sophia Lambros over 100 aces in her career. Can't do it that time. Here's Anna DeBeer for Louisville. And on the right side, the swing comes from Katrina Jensen for Boston College. There's Iko Jones to tie this first set for Louisville. Iko with four kills in the sweep of Syracuse on Friday night. Now, now Charity Looper, the UCLA transfer. There's Hannah Sherman starting once again. And she's unable to keep that block in play, however. A point to Boston College. The Eagles again going to their middle early. Sherman hadn't played in around three weeks before starting on Friday night. She's back in the lineup again for Louisville. That was her swing. Now here's DeBeer. And DeBeer on target. Great set there by Iko Jones and a little bit of a messy play from the Cardinals. Jones stepped right in and set a great ball to the outside. DeBeer led Louisville with nine kills in the victory on Friday. Now the aforementioned Elena Scott. Jensen the swing. Glock does well tracking back to get it. There's Kara Cressy just to get it over for Louisville. And then Jensen off the block. Scores for Boston College. Katrina Jensen, the senior from California, had 10 kills and five blocks in that five-setter, the loss to Notre Dame on Friday. Fantastic setting decisions from Lambros. We've seen every swing that Boston College has had has been a single blocker. Mentioned Elena Scott looking for that 1,000th dig. That player that just served Anna Murphy has over 1,400 digs in her career. Points to Louisville here to tie the game at three once again and a back and forth opening to this afternoon's game. An offensive battle so far for sure. Quick pace to it as well as Iko Jones steps behind the service line. To the left side now for Boston College. That was Hallie Schroeder. Back to Jensen, and Jensen once again off the block. Able to strike for BC. Huge arm swing from Jensen, but you see the 6-2 here, so we're switching to Grace Penn setting and bringing in Ross for the front row option. Bright start from Boston College. They look very confident, Steph. Any uh, surprise that they've come into LNN Federal Credit Union Arena and look so comfortable right off the bat? No, not really. They played a tough match on Friday night, and I think they did a lot of good things against Notre Dame. And I could see them coming in being a little bit frustrated that they didn't end with the win on Friday and really having that fire lit under them. There's a lot of self-inflicted wounds that did them in on Friday as Louisville tied it there through Anna DeBeer. Exactly. If they would have played this clean Friday night through all of the sets, it would have been a three-set match. They trailed two sets to none, then took the third and fourth set before ultimately falling by nine points in the fifth to the Fighting Irish. The BC continues to play well offensively early on. And again, we talked about the fact that they run that 6-2 offense, so they constantly have three hitting options out of the front row, and they use a back row attacker sometimes, especially when Schroeder's in the back row, as she is now, to provide a fourth offensive weapon. And that puts a defense like the Cardinals on their heels. Kara Cressy jumping all over that overpass. Cressy did not play on Friday, but back in early in this matchup against Boston College. Crabtree, the swing for BC. And it's a point to the Eagles. 
Via the net violation, called against Ellie Glock. Sherman had a good touch in the air, but as they landed, they were in the net on the block. So now Julia Haggerty steps back to serve. Played in every game last year for Boston College and has played 45 sets, now 46 this year. Was that touched? It was not. A point to Louisville. The swing there from Elena Crabtree, who had the hot hand on Friday with a dozen kills. And you see coach telling her there that she doesn't have to work so hard around that block. He wants to limit those hitting errors and really continue to challenge the Cardinal block in defense. Charity Looper throws it down. Leaping high above the net with two hands. She has hops. Look at how high she touches that ball above the top of the tape. So Louisville in front. And there is the block of the Cardinals. Sherman and Iko Jones. Credit goes to Iko Jones for that block. First block of the night for either side. And very solid double block. We talked about the Eagles offense getting to hit against single blocks early. If the Cardinals defense can set up double blocks, it's going to be a lot tougher to score. Perhaps an opportunity for Boston College, but a little out of sorts. They can't take advantage. So it sets it up for Louisville. Here's Iko on the right side. And a good dig defensively for BC. Looper and Sherman up with the denial. And then Jones and Sherman combining again, ultimately proving to score the point. That ball went down fast off of that block, and I think it ultimately hit a shoe of a Boston College player as it went down off of this block over here. And that ball was up, but then it hit the antenna out of bounds. Sherman with the block there. There she is offensively, but it's a terrific dig by Murphy. And a point here to Boston College. But in that point, Elena Scott making her moment of history, her 1,000th career dig, the 11th player in Louisville volleyball history to reach that career mark. An All-American last year, and with a good couple of seasons yet to come, she might yet challenge that overall career dig mark of over 2,100 for Louisville. And it's balls like that that we just saw from Elena Scott. She's running off the net and sets a second ball in system perfectly to Iko Jones outside. Usually when your libero sets the ball, you never refer to it as in system. But when Elena Scott handles that ball, their offense is in system. It's been mentioned several times, but she was a setter her entire prep career before coming to Louisville. As Louisville commits a service error there through Charity Luber to give Boston College the point. But that's part of her makeup, what makes her so spectacular. One of the best liberos in the country because she's such an asset to the Louisville passing game. For Boston College, Jensen once again on the right side. Such an interesting match so far. Everything seems to be one and done. We're either having fiery offenses or airs. Not a lot of long rallies happening so far. But the block for Louisville proving effective. Anna Sherman once again and Iko Jones making a big impact on this right side in this early going. I think both of the setters from Boston College need to continue to take some risks in running their offense. If they go with the easy set, they're setting their hitters up for competition against a huge double block. That took a touch from a Louisville blocker, and it's a point to Boston College. Allie Schroeder with the swing. 
And to Schroeder's credit, that's exactly the swing that you take against the huge double block of Iko Jones and Kara Cressy. Schroeder, a true freshman from Frisco, Texas, just north of Dallas, who's already made a big impact for these Eagles. Had nine kills last time out against Notre Dame. De Beer denied for the Boston College point. It starts with a pass that everyone knows this ball is going to the outside, specifically Haggerty, who's able to get out there and close the block against Anna De Beer. Haggerty leading the way on the season in the blocking category for Boston College with 56 entering today. There were Cressy. Not once, but twice. Both times hit right at Lambros. There's a dig from Scott. And then Cressy hit it into the net. And Boston College back in front. Love the choices there from Ellie Glock to go right back to the middle, but credit the digs of Lambro. She hung in there right in base, stayed low on defense, and those were textbook perfect digs off of a one ball. De Beer out of the back row, and she's denied once again. It's not just the Louisville block that showed up, it's Boston College as well. Haggerty in there, involved. And what a start for BC on the road. Murphy serves. Kept alive by Crabtree. Jensen the swing, a dig from Scott. And then that is a mistake from a player who's been very good so far. Katrina Jensen just with the miscue. And she has been hitting balls hard. The noise when that ball comes off of her hand. And sometimes it's tough as a hitter to switch from that power, power, power to a little bit of a finesse game. And then a mistake and serve received by the usually sure-handed Anna Murphy. Gives Louisville the ace. And erases that two-point cushion that Boston College had. We mentioned the self-inflicted errors in Friday night's loss. Jason Kennedy, the head coach, hoping that it doesn't turn into a trend in back-to-back -back ACC games. De Beer, that's in from Anna. And Louisville back in front. Coach Kennedy thought that might have been out, but looking down to his bench, and none of them will make eye contact with him, so I think that means it was in. And another ace for Louisville. And another difficult serve received for Boston College, but a good one so far. The number five Cardinals in front as we head to a timeout. Moving into our first. Oh, Elena Scott with that dig reached the 1,000 mark for her Louisville career. And during this timeout, that milestone was announced to this crowd of 1,000 plus. And you see the reaction from not just her, but her entire all of her teammates around her. Just a fun moment there, Steph, to see the joy on the face of Elena Scott. We saw, we saw her family all in attendance earlier on in the broadcast. Again, one of the all-time greats already for this Louisville volleyball program. Back underway after the timeout in what has been a hotly contested opening. Out of the break, De Beer took something off that ball. Looper with the dig. Can Louisville keep it alive? Look at the effort from Scott, but she can't quite do it. Diving into that row of fans behind the court. Louisville has found their block against the left sides from Boston College, but they have not yet found their block on their left side of the court against the right sides of Boston College. I think the Eagles really need to exploit that if they want to score a few more points in this first set to possibly take it. Here's Kara Cressy powerfully from the right side for Louisville. When Cressy's slide is in tempo, that is such a hard ball to stop. She is on the move here from the left side of the court. Perfect pass from Scott. And her against a single block on that slide is almost automatic. Cressy averaging two and a half kills per set so far this season. 
from the left side for Boston College. That was Audrey Ross. And then Cressy again. Back-to-back -back points for Kara Cressy this time. Eliminating that overpass. Great hustle and effort, but when that ball hangs up near the tape, Cressy takes care of it. First set that has flown by. And Beer gives Boston College a point with that service error. Boston College returns in kind. Allie Schroeder committed that one. And just as I was saying, this first set has flown by. A little bit of the pace has been taken out of it. It's getting a little more calculated as it gets closer to the end. Bit of an awkward one for Boston College. They are able to get it over, and Cressy hitting the deck defensively. Now Looper is blocked. And that may be the biggest theme of this first set for both sides, Steph, is the ability to score from blocking. We talked about both of these teams' offense, but that's a great swing by Cla Crabtree. Good dig, but everyone knows that that ball has to go to Looper, and then Haggerty's right there. We've got to see both of these offenses have multiple weapons, or the block is going to be the story of tonight. Here's Looper with another opportunity, and this time she makes no mistake. And right on cue there, you see Louisville run a different play on offense. They bring Looper inside so that it's not predictable. She goes right in the gap between the two blockers. Louisville, one of the best hitting teams in the entire ACC in terms of percentage. Looper right up there, close to the team average. There's a joust, one by Hannah Sherman. And now Sherman trying to score, can't keep it in. And Danny Busboom Kelly, though, thought it was, perhaps. She's got the card in her hand. And she is going to challenge. Danny's challenging a net violation on the, the first joust there where we saw Sherman up at the net. And I'll be honest, in real time, I thought that Sherman was in the net, so I'm interested to see what these replays look like. I was gonna gonna say during the call that I thought Kennedy was gonna pull the challenge card, but then it ended up the point going the other way. It looks pretty clean there and that, that it was the ball, but that's the play where I thought Sherman was potentially in the net and Coach Busboom Kelly thought Boston College was in the net. Yeah, I have to say, it does look pretty clean. The ball spends a lot of time touching the tape, so the net was definitely moving, but it looks pretty clean on both sides to me. And it's going to be a quick review, which would lead you to believe that this call will stand. And in fact, it is confirmed. Which means, true, they were right with us. They saw no yeah. net on either side. So the first challenge of the afternoon goes awry for Danny Busboom Kelly. And again in volleyball, two challenges. If you get them right, you keep them. Service error for BC. Gives another point to Louisville, and the Cardinals now inching closer to capturing the first set. We've talked about some, some errors on Friday night from Boston College, but one thing that the Eagles coaching staff made sure to say before the game was that they have to be aggressive serving to keep this Cardinal offense on their heels. And so those errors are not bad errors when they're serving tough and trying to make the Cardinal offense only operate with one or two weapons. See that five set loss to Notre Dame that we've alluded to a time or two so far. That was a difficult one to swallow for BC. Coming from behind, they trail two sets to none, force that decisive fifth set. And I think it was tough to swallow because they did some really good things. And they do a really good thing here. 
And there's where that serving pays off. That's exactly what the coaching staff wants. Not often you see Anna DeBeer looking a bit helpless defensively, but that one just ate her up on the serve from BC. And the Eagles trying to claw their way back. But Louisville adds another point to their lead through Iko Jones. One of the biggest culture pieces for this Louisville program. She means so much. She's been around so long, to be fair. And such a fun player that can keep the mood light. It's 21-19, but Iko's not getting nervous. Iko's trying to play and keep it exciting for her teammates. And there's an ace for Elena Scott. And that will take us to a timeout. Boston College hoping to keep this set close and maybe come from behind to take it. This is the second game in ACC play for each of these clubs. Here's a look a little bit closer at what Boston College was able to do up in northern Indiana and South Bend taking on Notre Dame on Friday. Crabtree leading the way offensively for BC with those 12 kills. And you see the blocks, that's carried over to this afternoon's game, Steph. Yeah, their block was fun to watch. And again, Palazzo does such a good, and Haggerty do such a good job that if, if they know where the ball's going, they're able to get out there and really shut down the hitter and finish, even though they're not necessarily super athletic or super tall middles. They do a good job of figuring out where the ball's going and kind of thinking a step ahead. And for Louisville, quite the opposite on Friday night, an absolute cruise for the Cardinals. Really, in that third set, they were dominant over Syracuse, a team battling injury, the Orange, and just weren't quite up to the task of challenging Louisville. You see the hitting percentage was stellar on Friday night. Alana Bankston, a freshman, came in with six kills. Reese Robbins, another freshman, was given a big opportunity, had seven kills. So Louisville able to use some players who are a little bit out of the main group on Friday night, give them some big experience and a win to start ACC play. But these games like, like this one today for Louisville, Steph, so important because the Cardinals would be a favorite in this one, but they can't afford to sleep on a team like BC. So much focus goes to that Louisville pit matchup. Throw in Georgia Tech as well as Elena Scott has back-to-back -back aces on either side of the timeout. But Louisville can't afford to give one up against a team like BC. Exactly, and we'll talk about it a little bit more later, but the way scheduling works in the ACC too, some teams play each other twice, and sometimes you don't play other teams twice, so there's some interesting dynamics in there as far as finishing top of the ACC to get the automatic berth. The run of aces ends at two for Scott with that error. But her two aces have brought Louisville to within two of closing out the first set. Now it's Anna Murphy, native of Zionsville, Indiana, just up the road. Jensen, and Jensen does it once again. Her fifth kill. And now we have a timeout for Louisville. Been a very seesaw affair thus far. And Katrina Jensen doing a tremendous job offensively of leading this Boston College team as they have been neck for neck, step for step with Louisville thus far. Previously at Southern California, where he was a technical director of both the men and women's programs, and then ultimately an associate head coach for the women's side. He viewed that 
championship last year. Not as, you know, not a crowning moment for his program, but another step towards where they're going. And you see the way this year has gone. They've been a hot team of late, 9-1 and one over their last 10. Well, and his quote was that they built this the old-fashioned way. They haven't used the transfer portal. They've focused on training. They've set those incremental goals, and they've hit them. You mentioned the transfer portal, or lack thereof, for Boston College. That focus on building from within has resulted in a very deep team. 20 players on the roster, 19 of them have played this season. And out of the timeout, Boston College scores via the block. And Haggerty once again making an impact. Just a little bit sloppy play there. You saw Ellie Glock without a great set to Jones. She had to just throw that over, and Haggerty was right there to stop the ball she knew was coming from Cressy. Opening set very much in the balance. Here's De Beer for Louisville. Where will Boston College go? They'll go to the left side with Schroeder. Now Louisville out of the back row with Looper. Now Jensen from the right side took something off that ball. Scott diving in. Schroeder trying to pounce. A dig from Looper. Jensen again right through Looper and Scott to score. And that evens the set at 23. And Louisville calling another timeout. You see Boston College really forcing this ball to Jensen on the right side. She went off speed on the first one, but I think from her she needs to keep swinging. The Cardinal block and defense have not found a way to stop the power shot from Jensen coming off the right side. We saw earlier the slow start to the year for Boston College, followed by those nine wins in their last ten. There's a wider look at how that non-conference slate went for the Eagles heading into Friday's conference opener against Notre Dame. Again, a veteran team with a lot of experience. Julia Haggerty, who's had a block fest so far today with an excellent hitting percentage on the year thus far. Boston College, though, did face some tough competition in the non-conference. Tennessee, San Diego, top-level programs. The Volunteers currently ranked. They've got a big matchup with Kentucky coming up later today. But it's a little bit of a tested Boston College team. Many veterans, many players like we mentioned that have been around the program a long time. They went out and played some teams in the non-conference. Yeah, and I think it's paying off here. I think they're doing the right things. They're finding what works. They're sticking to an aggressive serve. And DBK had to call that timeout because they're not able to stop the things Boston College is doing, and that's Louisville's defense is not used to that. Usually, when they know what's happening on the other side, they're able to combat that and shut it down. But right now, their block on the left side is non-existent. Remember last weekend, Louisville, their lone loss of the year was to Stanford in a match that they looked very comfortable in the opening two sets. Then Stanford adjusted. And Louisville couldn't respond. Can they respond here? Out of the timeout they do with Iko Jones. And that puts Louisville one point away from bagging this very contested opening set. And Boston College will now, now take their second and final timeout of the set. The chess match continues. And you talked about the Stanford game. The toughest thing about the Stanford game was serve receive. Look at Looper put this ball right on Ellie Glock's head. So she has three options offensively. That's how you take.
will hopefully pay off as the season progresses. Louisville's dropped just six sets all season. They are on the cusp of keeping that number as is. And Boston College just subbed so that Crabtree's back in the back row. Look for them to use her out of system if they don't have a pass. Oh, that's an overpass from Murphy and Kara Cressy puts the finishing touch on this first set victory for the Louisville Cardinals. Louisville huddle at the end of that first set was trying to find a way to put up a block against the right side of the Eagles. And there's another service error for Boston College. You mentioned the aggressive tactic from Jason Kennedy from behind the service line. It's come to bite Boston College a couple of times so far this afternoon. And for context on some of those numbers, Louisville hitting 167. They hit over 300 so far in the year on average. And is it a second point to Louisville? It is this time from the ace. Fifth of the day. And that low hitting percentage on the heels of a very efficient night Friday. Another overpass from BC, and this time it's DeBeer to make it 3-0 Louisville in set two. And um, among the themes in that first set step, the overpasses from Boston College, there were a number of them. And that goes along with the service. He blows a little bit of Boston College. We talked about them being aced four times, and then the overpasses don't show up as aces on the stat sheet, but very similar should be automatic points. The Eagles on the board via the error for Looper's service. And I think that's the other thing we've seen from the Cardinals tonight. We've seen a couple aces in a row, but Elena Scott's two aces late in the set were then followed by an error. Now we see Looper with an ace and a ball that led to an overpass that's then followed by an error. Brooklyn Yellen, the true freshman, has come in. She served there. Iko Jones with the kill for Louisville. Jones now tied with Cressy for the team lead with five kills. And you see the three blocks to go along with it. She's played an important role for the Cardinals so far. Cressy finishes off what started with a terrific dig for Louisville defensively on the swing from Schroeder. In the beginning of this match, we talked about needing to run variety from your offense. Look at that dig by Elena Scott that allows Kara Cressy to go in the gap behind the setter and really keep that block on their toes. Again, Cressy did not play on Friday, but does not look rusty one bit. Iko Jones for Louisville. Now Schroeder for BC. Cressy got a piece. Looper out of the back row. Did that dip in? It did not. Ball was bending toward that back line. But just too much on it from Charity Looper. And a big smile from her. She knew that she hit it well. And one thing that seems to be a theme so far tonight is each team, when they are able to string together a couple points, then they seem to be ending their own rallies or their own streaks with their errors. It's not the other team putting together a good situation and getting out of it. It's two aces and then an error. It's a couple of kills and then a ball hit out of bounds. And that's really been the story from both sides tonight. Nobody's been able to string together three or four points in a row without making their own error. Louisville can't control it. And it's another point to Boston College. The Eagles now on a little bit of a run to climb back into the set. Haggerty is doing a fantastic job closing the block on the left side. And it's Anna Murphy to continue serving for BC, the reigning defensive player of the week in the ACC. Louisville a bit cleaner that time. And it's a point to Louisville on a violation from BC. Or rather, just off the block. 
This is going to be interesting oh, because me. the R2 actually called a net violation as well. So then I think she's saying that the net violation happened first. And so it doesn't really matter who the ball was off to hit the antenna. Still counts as just one point though, right? Definitely. I was just trying to translate all the whispers that <laughs> yes. were going on in front of us. <laughs> oh, there's a tremendous dig that came in from Yelland. And then Cressy inaccurate with her swing. But I tell you what, Brooklyn Yellen deserves a ton of credit for that BC point. She got down quick to keep that ball alive. We have not seen many balls hit the floor tonight that have been off speed or a tip or a sloppy ball. The defense is really strong from the Boston College crew. Grace Penn. Serves for BC. Here's Anna DeBeer right at Murphy for the point. DeBeer hits such a fast low ball, even if you're right in front of it. If it is outside your body line at all, that is a tough dig. It's on you before you know it. Swing there for BC from Audrey Ross. And she gets the kill. And Ross actually plays right side. She swings on the left during that rotation. And that's where we've seen her go to her the most tonight. But I'd be interested if they'll start using her a little more off this right side where Jensen's had so much success. Elena Scott forced to try and play it over and hit it right into the net to extend this scoring run for Boston College and bring them level at seven apiece. Let's pay attention to the precision in Louisville's serve receive right now. To go with the aggression of Boston College's serving, that can lead to errors. Well, we were paying attention, but we didn't get the opportunity. It was all the same thought process. That's right. Schroeder with an ace along with 16 digs on Friday. I was hoping for an ace there, couldn't find it. Now for BC from the left side, Crabtree had the swing, but it's a point to Louisville on the attack error. And Crabtree, relatively quiet so far, a minus 400 hitting percentage with just one kill after she was in double figures against Notre Dame Friday. Trying to answer that criticism, and she does. She's been given a tough, tough job here tonight. When the ball is in system, we've seen Boston College use their middles and use their right side. So Tra Crabtree is playing trash collector out on the left side right now and only really being given the ball in the tough situations. Crabtree with 280 kills and over 200 digs last season. Been a regular player for some time for this BC program. There's an attacking error for Louisville. Or rather, Get credit to the block to Crabtree. Milliken and Crabtree here both know exactly where the ball's going to Debeer back row and were able to put up a solid block. Not a team able to get any separation so far today. Looper scores for Louisville to give the Cardinals the lead once again. Love the Cardinal offense bringing Looper inside again, trying to exploit those seams from the really effective Eagles block. For the biggest gap so far today, got to be, what, four or five points? I mean, there's really not been any team in control, either team in control. It's made it fun to watch, though. Indeed it has. Did that hit the antenna? It did. That is where the signal goes, and it's a point to Louisville. That was Ross that time, the freshman from California. I think that was the right decision from Penn, though, to keep trying to get offense off of the right side. So Louisville by two. Crabtree doesn't have the answer. Hannah Sherman with a block once again. Fourth block of the afternoon for Hannah Sherman. One of seven, uh, I beg your pardon, four Louisville blocks. A terrific Sunday afternoon of volleyball here at LNN Federal Credit Union Arena. It is Louisville 
a set in front and three points in front in this second set. Boston College just hasn't quite been able to get over that hump so far. And every time they've pulled even or taken a small lead, Louisville has been able to rally and regain that lead. It's Ellie Glock out of the timeout, off the tape. Ross with the swing. Scott with the dig. Louisville, though, just has to get it over. An opportunity for BC. They can't take advantage. Here's Looper for the Cardinals. Bit out of sorts for the Eagles, but they do get it over. Where does Louisville go? They go to Charity Looper. Murphy trying to dig it. And Steph Cantway with a terrific catch. I about got a hug, so I told her good hustle. Yeah. <laughs> Charity Looper, though, gets credit for the Louisville points. I think talk about that rally, though. We have seen some top-notch action here when the ball is in play in transition. This is high-level volleyball. Both teams are struggling a little bit on finding their rhythm in serve and serve receive. So I think whoever can pass better for the rest of this match is really going to start to rise to the top. Quite the hush over the crowd. Awaiting that serve. Oh, look at the touch. The delicate one from Ross. Just lifting it over the block and then dropping it behind for the point. The Louisville Cardinals still have not found a solution for the offense or for the offense coming from the right side of Boston College. Is there an adjustment that you think would make sense to address that for Louisville? As Looper powerfully strikes once again for the Cardinals. I think that the decision they could make is to pull their middle a little bit more towards the right side and leave, like in this case, leave Iko Jones as a single block over against their left side. However, they have been blocking so well off the left side. Do you want to take what you've been doing well away? They are winning here, so is an adjustment necessary? Do you just let them score from the right side? That is one way to look at it. Aiden Bartlett with a terrific dig off the bench for Louisville, but then Iko Jones with the hitting error to give Boston College the point. You see Bartlett came in just a moment ago and immediately with maximum effort, but to no avail on the point. There's Hannah Sherman down the middle. Jones won the joust, and then hanging in the air was Jensen. And it's able to put Louisville off rhythm, out of sorts defensively. Katrina Jensen just hung in the air for a long moment here. And Louisville ultimately confused it looked like a little bit, Steph. Yeah, it was kind of an out of sorts play, and the ball got past the antenna. And usually what you want to do there is bring your block back inside, but they'd already jumped. So then there was no time to make that adjustment. So BC back within two. Again, I think serve receive so important here. The Cardinals were able to bail themselves out of that play, but that was not a quality pass to give their offense options. Schroeder. There's Kira Cressy, that's in. And it's another kill for Cressy. Tied with De Beer atop the heap for Louisville today. Great transition there, turning an off-system ball from the Eagles into fast offense. That's exactly what the Cardinal offense needs to do. Number seven, as you see. Jensen, there's an overpass and Jensen Pounds it into the floor. Jensen has such a fast arm. She is fun to watch as a hitter. You see her hit this first ball against a single block. Great dig touch, but it comes right back to her. And Jensen continues to be efficient as ever. To beer. Schroeder, that just skipped off the tape. Might have been heading out as well.
Jensen again. Off the block. Gets it done. Jensen is fun to watch right now. The whole gym knows the ball is going to her, but it still is unstoppable. The senior from Temecula, California. Hitting just 247. I say just on the season. That's because she's hitting 500 now on the afternoon today. And we've seen her do a couple of crafty things, but those haven't been the things that have scored. She has scored with power. Jones is blocked. And Boston College pulls within one once again. Punch for punch all day long. Again, pay attention to the Louisville serve receive. If they can have multiple options out of their pass, they're a much more dynamic offense. They do there with Debeer Cressy also available. And it's Anna Debeer from the left side who scores for the Cardinals to restore the two-point cushion. And as we're talking about having more options, Louisville just went to their double sub, so they continue to have three hitters in the front row now, with Petrenko taking over setting duties out of the back row. Petrenko, the Coastal Carolina transfer, the Hungarian, a very experienced player coming into this Louisville program, asked to take on a smaller role with this team. And Haggerty with the kill there for Boston College to bring them back within one. And same thing on the flip side, fantastic pass here, enables them to run middle right in the gap against no block. Haggerty, the 6-2 senior, a towering presence right now. But again, Boston College not quite to get over, not quite able to get over the hump. There's Reese Robbins again to keep the Eagles at bay. The true freshman who had a strong night on Friday with seven kills and four blocks. Her first action of this afternoon, and she comes through for the Cardinals. That was not necessarily a pretty play, and Coach Kennedy's right in front of us asking if maybe that was a lift, but definitely a judgment call, not a challengeable play. But the service error keeps BC in it. Now he's signaling to the ref that C, that's why they missed the serve, because it was a lift. That's what we call the volleyball god. That's a, a ball don't lie. Exactly, exactly. To steal a phrase from our basketball friends. We use it in volleyball. Okay. Volleyball. There's Reese Robbins once again for Louisville, this time from the right side. The freshman continues to make an impact for this team. We talked about the depth of both of these offenses, and I love the chess match that's going on here. Right side offense is scoring, so let's put a sub in to allow right side and Reese Robbins to be effective. Anna Sherman, the block for Louisville. And I think the Louisville bench will celebrate that one just a little extra, because that may be the first stop that they've had against the right side offense of Boston College. Fifth block for Sherman. CC Rush serves for the Cardinals. Great pass. From pin to Haggerty. Great serve received there, allowed the Eagles to go really fast on that serve received. And Haggerty, after scoring, steps behind the line. BC needs a run right now to take the lead in this set. They've been close, but they've trailed most of the way. From the right side, Hoppus, Sam Hoppus into the game. And that pass off balance, Roach just forced to get it over, and then Louisville out of sorts. Some ugly volleyball there from both teams, but BC, the benefactor. I think we said five or six points ago how pretty everything was yeah. in transition and went back and forth, and we lost all of it right there. It looks like the team is asking for Danny to challenge a net violation. 
The call was that there was no net, but Louisville wants them to review the play and see if there was a net violation from the Boston College side. Well, this is important because Louisville has already lost one challenge today. Very true. And in the second set, if they're wrong again, if Danny Busboom Kelly has an incorrect challenge again here, Louisville would be without a challenge for the rest of the way. The net definitely moves here, but I haven't seen what makes contact. An elbow of the outside on the blocking. Hoppus. Hoppus with her outside elbow. Ooh, but also if it touches the net outside of the antenna, it is not a net violation. So that's an interesting perspective here. Right, the placement of her elbow there might be outside the antenna. The review is over. And the call is overturned. The challenge, a correct one. The net violation was seen. And Louisville gets the point. And Danny Busboom Kelly keeps her challenge card in her pocket for the rest of the match. And I think that's a really important point that you made. This is, this is an early time to take your second challenge with a match being this close. But again, supporting her team, Danny Busboom Kelly, responding to their input. Yeah, that was definitely led by them. Great pass. Hoppus, the kill. And BC says, you're not going to get far from us. But can they erase the deficit in the race to 25? been a very valiant effort from BC after that service error uh, points in Louisville but BC could be looking at a two set deficit if they can't rally here Louisville with five aces on the afternoon That's just a plain old hitting error for Boston College. And we talked about the service you being so important. Right here, Jensen is actually on the left side, the way it's stacked, and Crabtree is on the right side. So they need to have a pass here off the service to stay in offense. Well, Louisville didn't really need the services of Kara Cressy on Friday night against Syracuse. Despite her absence, the Cardinals we're well in control against the Orange, but she's back in the lineup today. And in a much closer game, she has been very needed. Seven kills, hitting 200 so far for Cressy, the redshirt sophomore out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. She's done such a good job taking care of a lot of the, the junk at the net during the play and that's what she she's great at the slide she's great at the one but she also is just such a presence up at the net and you see all of those overpasses that she's hitting tonight are part of what plays into this hitting percentage when you get that junk you get those overpasses that's another way you can hit 917 and 588 in different matches she's been such a force for the Cardinals this season you add up all those numbers, she's hitting 508 coming into today's game. Now the hitting percentage of 200 today will bring that down a few ticks. But if you're hitting 500, you're doing something right, especially this deep into the season. That's not a small sample size. Kara Cressy among the nation's leaders in offensive efficiency. And it's not necessarily an easy task when we've seen two different setters from the Louisville Cardinals. She didn't have a ton of playing time last season clicking with the setters, and Lothero was the starting setter last year, and so she hasn't had just a lot of time to work on the clicks and the little things with her setting crew. Out of the timeout, there's an ace for Charity Looper, and Louisville one point away from taking a commending two-set lead in this match. Despite a significant challenge from Boston College thus far. And Looper backs up her ace with an error. Still the four-point cushion 
for U of L. Brooklyn Yellen to serve for BC. Zyko Jones. Jensen the swing. Sherman hits the deck. Jones does as well. Debeer gets it over. The dig for Murphy, but she can't find a teammate. And that will end set number two. And Louisville hoping to close this very competitive game out in a sweep if they can win this set. But it's a good start out of the intermission for Boston College as Ellie Glock has the service error for Louisville. One of seven errors in the service game so far for the Cardinals. And so the ball turns over to Anna Murphy and Boston College. They've had five service errors as well to go along with Louisville's seven aforementioned. Schroeder the swing for BC. There's Iko Jones. Nothing Yellen really could do. And Iko continues to play well. Kill number six for her to go along with four blocks. Great pass here in transition. Gave multiple options. You see Sherman finding a way to try to get in front of the setter. Didn't get up, but kept a blocker distracted for Iko Jones to finish on the outside. <laughs> Another point to Boston College on another Louisville service error. Mentioned the self-inflicted wounds for BC a couple of times. Louisville, those service errors starting to compound a little bit. And, and those it, service errors go both ways. We talked about that the serve receive is so important. And the way you keep the other team passing bad is by serving tough. So those are a little bit can go both ways, but you don't want to be shooting yourself in the foot. Locke and Sherman not quite on the same page the first time, but they are the second time in that rally. And Hannah Sherman with the kill. If at first you don't succeed, try again. Well, and we talked about being able to click with your setter with Cressy. Same thing for Sherman. She's played less than Cressy with Block in a game situation, but I think she just needs to be a little bit more vocal and make sure she's always an option. Credit to BC's Jane Petrie, who came to the game and did a terrific job defensively to get that ball off the court on the initial ball from Sherman. A point to Louisville after that one took a touch on the swing from DeBeer. And Hoppus and Haggerty acknowledged they touched it. Yelland to the floor, as does Glock. But she can't find a teammate with that dig, and it is a point to Boston College. And another kill off that right side. It was Schroeder this time out there. I think we have to watch Boston College just continue to push their offense to the right side of the court. Allie Schroeder, a freshman that has worked her way into this rotation for Boston College, playing significant time on the afternoon. Two kills, along with four digs. Off the tape. Louisville just able to do enough. Haggerty the swing. Scott and Looper, great effort. Now Hoppus and Scott couldn't quite find a teammate. Glock, tremendous effort as well. Trying to keep the ball alive, but it's a point to Boston College. Scott and Looper in the back row are two of the best back there to keep that ball alive. But Louisville's block has got to touch this ball from the right side. Points to Louisville on the service error. Talking about Scott and Looper, 14 digs for Elena Scott, five digs for Charity Looper. And that statistic shows you how close this one has been the entire way. Neither team able to get any separation on the other. But it has been Louisville to reach 25 first in the first two sets. There's Kara Cressy from the right side. Hitting it cross court. That was not an impressive contact on the ball, but what scores on there is the contact point. You see a free ball here allows Cressy to be a step ahead of this ball, and she's able to touch that ball fast and high. 
Schroeder out of the back row, and it's in front of Looper. We see Schroeder out of the back row from Boston College gives them a fourth option on offense with three hitters front row and Schroeder coming down the middle. Another not great serve received from Louisville. It was Devere. And Glock with the left alertly. And Boston College didn't react quickly enough. A great heads up play there by Glock when things got sloppy. That's the first ball we've seen that's an off system ball fall against this Boston College defense. First kill for Ellie Glock on what is statistically her second swing. But then Louisville cannot continue the momentum with the service error. And Meski on the Louisville bench with a nervous look, the associate head coach. I think those lack of runs that we talked about, the constantly ending anything good, any good momentum that you see with an error is very challenging for a coach's morale. That was in from Charity Looper. It's got to just be, cross -court shot. it's got to be a bundle of nerves to be a coach in a game like this, right? You feel like you want to do something to try and help your team succeed. Yeah, I think in a game like this, you never feel like you're getting any rhythm or any control. And that's kind of credit. That's what those airs do, is they just take away that moment to take a deep breath or to try something new and different. Katrina Jensen into double figures with this kill. And first time we've seen that type of play from Boston College today where they had multiple options and they run a fast middle and a fast outside ball and make the blockers choose. Camden Tran, the freshman into the game. With the dig for Louisville, Sherman able to score off the block on that free ball over. We talked about Kara Cressy picking up all the scrappy balls at the net. Hannah Sherman has definitely been on top of that role today as well. Great pass. The touch was from Roach. Eiko Jones able to react, and then Looper with the left gets it over for Louisville. Here's Schroeder denied. Now Jensen. She too is denied, but that block was out of play. And Katrina Jensen continues to be the leader offensively. She's got 11 kills, no one else with more than three for BC. And those are challenging wise from the head ref and the line judge working together that hit the block and then the antenna, or did it hit the antenna first? So there was a little confusion there, but a definite kill from Jensen. Looper on the right side for Louisville this time. Again, we see that offense being so effective from both right side offense, but Looper just elevates and hits over the block of Schroeder. A super athlete, Charity Looper. Was measured at 10, 7, 10, 7 and a half at UCLA before transferring into Louisville. And you believe that number, certainly, just watching her play. Rosanna DeBeer through the block that time. Haggerty and Jensen couldn't control it. And DeBeer has been a difference maker in this match. We've talked about everyone knows where this ball's going, but she is still fighting through and around a double block. 11 kills for DeBeer. Anna Sherman had her eyes on a kill there, but miss hit it. Might have been aiming for that back corner. I think it ended up floating a little bit further off the net than she originally expected. All learning moments for Hannah Sherman. Back-to-back -back games of action for her after she hadn't seen action in a couple of weeks. Into the game there was Jane Petri, the junior from San Diego. They played just 17 sets on the season coming into this afternoon. Limited action today as well, and she has the service error.
And that is another miscue from Petri. Just threw it up for a teammate. And no one on the end of it. Can Louisville perhaps seize momentum? There's not been much of it in this one. There's Kira Cressy. I got well by Yelland. She has to get it over. Chance for Louisville if they can execute. It's Iko Jones, and she does off the block. Good high swing there and good execution. I think the gym thought this ball was going to Kara Cressy right off of the, the free ball, and Iko only had a blocker, maybe a half, getting one hand over there from the middle and was able to score. Left hand, Cressy going to the floor. It's a point to Boston College to end that little run for Louisville. And as it continues, it, it, it continues to be as it's been all day with neither team able to really get any separation. Blocked from Haggerty. Miscue there from Hoppus, just too much under that ball. It wasn't a great second ball set up for her on an off system, but I do like that she went to swing. That's the risk that Boston College has to take to try to steal a set here. Glock and Jones heading to the bench for Louisville, bringing on Briggy Petrenko to serve. Also Aiden Bartlett, Reese Robbins into the game as well for the Cardinals. Hoppus with authority that time on a line cross court. Great swing here, just inside the block. Another not perfect serve receive, but a good opportunity to take a second ball to the right side. Hop is now second on BC with four kills on the day, that is. There is a violation on Louisville to give Boston College the point. Robin was off balance as she was transitioning quickly from taking the ball offensively out of the middle to moving to the right side and was in the net. Looks like she said, my bad, the freshman there. <laughs> Louisville goes to Anna De Beer, and it was not touched. A rare attacking error for De Beer. Hitting 280 on the day for a Louisville team hitting now 240. And again, you see Louisville was starting to gain a little bit of space and momentum, and now two back-to-back -back errors under their control that have put this batch match back to close again. Point to Louisville, Kara Cressy scoring off the block, and that'll take us to a timeout. Boston College right there with Louisville, but they need a set to stay alive in this one. The Eagles. Very competitive, though, despite Louisville having four straight wins entering this one in this matchup. Boston College has not been intimidated by that number five ranking whatsoever. They've been right there the entire way, but it's some mistakes from both teams that are really keeping this thing close. Neither team able to get any momentum because of those mistakes, Steph. Well, I think some of that is also credit to the blocking. I think when you're playing against a big block, you try to be more creative as a hitter, and sometimes that leads to a few extra errors. We see Coach Kennedy pulling the challenge card here. The ruling was no touch on the block, but he thinks it went off the arm of Reese Robbins on the outside block here. I'll say from our vantage point, it looked like it did take a touch from Reese Robbins. We'll see if the replay confirms that thought. And I think these are the toughest ones. It did hit the tape. It definitely hit the tape. It's the next ball. It definitely hit the tape there. So does it catch arm when it hits the tape or not? This will be a little bit better look. Very close. I mean, it's really an inch wide of her arm if it doesn't hit it. And you definitely see the ball change direction. But again, was that because of the tape or because of the arm? It's a quick review, though. We've had a bunch of quick reviews today. And 
it did take a touch. It is a correct challenge from Boston College. And a smile on the face of Jason Kennedy. I agree with the smile from Kennedy on that one because it did look fairly obvious once we watched the replay. That is why I like the challenge rule that you get to keep it though. I think it's frustrating as a coach when something like that happens and you're like, man, I had to waste my challenge. At least here you just get to kind of giggle. I was right. right, but you get to move on. I think that is a correct rule. Yeah, it was a good adjustment to the original challenge rule when yeah. they put it in. But no momentum because of another service error. That's been one of the big themes of this one. Between the two teams, 17 service errors. That was the eighth for BC. An overpass. Petranko to Looper. Boston College able to recover. Jensen the swing. Looper again. Murphy a dig, a joust. And we continue, and that a similar play to the one a moment ago. And this time, they make the call that was ultimately made on review last time, that it took a touch from Reese Robbins and is a point to Boston College. The R2 is right on it, and what a smart swing by Jensen. She, her only goal there was to hit arms on the way out of bounds. So BC within one. CC Rush into the game for Louisville. Scott flying around. It's Looper with the left. Schroeder. Scott the dig. Looper again this time with her right hand. And she finds the floor. These are some of the better rallies that we saw early in the first set and the second set where everybody is firing on all cylinders. Great swing inside the block, but again, Elena Scott puts up such a good ball in transition that Looper has options and splits the block. Looper eight kills along with five digs. And a pair of aces as well, an all-around day for charity. Jensen's been the leader for Boston College, and she continues to be. Her 13th kill, hitting well over 500. Great serve receive. Looper now on the right is denied by Haggerty. And Haggerty does it for Boston College. Her blocking form is fantastic. Every time, even if she's a little bit late to the close, she does such a good job of finishing her hands back into the middle of the court so she's never getting pulled. Julia Haggerty, a game-high eight blocks. Leading returner in that statistical category for BC. She makes an impact here. It'll come back to Looper. She has to go over that Haggerty block. And then Looper does a terrific job to react, just simply react there. Poor pass to Jensen. Chance for Louisville. Looper, though, denied. Some good volleyball right now. Here's Looper again. This time she pulls through for the Cardinals. And I don't know how she found a hole here. What an effort from both sides. She keeps that ball alive off of the tight set and then is able to fire fast into the hole. Looper heads to the bench, having given Louisville a one-point lead late in this third set. And her highlight play in that last rally was actually the dig yeah. off of the scrappy play. Um, of the ball that hit the tape from the roll shot before the multiple swing attempt. Which I think is what we're getting cleaned up right now is her dig sweat hit, hit. from that exact ball. Each team with 41 digs tonight. We've had some great long rallies for sure. Elena Scott leading the way with 15. It's a game high. She's the only player in double figures in digs. At her 1,000th earlier on in the day. There's Anna DeBeer. Was it in? It was. 
points to Louisville. And the Cardinals inching closer to a sweep, a hard-fought sweep. But there's six points from it right now as it stands. Well, after this game for BC, it is back-to-back -back. huge tests against the ACC's elite. Number five, Louisville today. They will take a road trip to Pennsylvania to face the Panthers of Pitt on Friday. But the interesting note about the Boston College schedule, Steph, is that is the only time the matchup today against Louisville and then next Friday against Pitt that BC will see either of those top two in the league. Yeah, I think that's the thing to mention here that we referenced earlier is that Boston College has to keep their confidence up. They're playing great tonight and they have to keep their confidence up through the beginning of this ACC schedule. And then they have the ability to go undefeated after these first two matches. And that could really come into play here, whereas Louisville and Pitt play each other twice. I'm pretty confident that they both play Georgia Tech twice. And those dynamics could get really interesting when it comes to final standings at the top of the ACC. And for Louisville, they will continue to battle away at this ACC. A trip to Notre Dame coming up on Wednesday. And one of the matchups with Pitt looming large in a couple of weeks' time, mid-October. That'll be at the KFC Young Center, the downtown arena here in Louisville. And like we said about this game, Steph, for the Cardinals, it's about taking care of business and against teams you're expected to beat. You can't afford to let one slip when you have Pitt looking at you on the schedule in just a couple of weeks' time. Agreed, and that's not to take anything away from the strength of the ACC this year. Out of the timeout, Aiden Bartlett, a service error, another one. Just to keep match. it fun. Right, yes. Just to ensure that nobody gets comfortable. We have yet to see the graphic that anyone's on a 3-0 three, three and run yep. or a 4-0 run. That has not been the story of today. But the question right now, can BC take this set, extend the game? They return the service error. Could it be a matter of survival in the final moments of this third set? Who can make the fewest mistakes? There's another one. And we've talked about the service errors. The thing to watch now in these final five or six points of the match is going to be, are these service errors worth it? Are they keeping the serve receivers off balance? How is the passing? Block to Cressy's chest. She had to go underhanded to get that ball over. Hoppus the swing, Hoppus the kill. And Boston College has tied it at 20 in the third set. But that's where we see the serving payoff. Louisville didn't get to take a good swing at the ball on their first opportunity in serve receive, and that led to transition offense for Boston College behind their server. Danny Busboom Kelly off the bench with a timeout here. Hoping to see this one out right now. Boston College probably deserves to at least take a set in this one, given the way they play. But it's been a strong schedule for Louisville. This is by design from Danny Busboom Kelly. Wanted to test her team, get some quality resume building wins. It's been the case really across all of college volleyball. The top teams very willing to face one another. You see just the one loss to Pitt. Uh, I beg your pardon, to Stanford. But two matchups with Pitt, two matchup, matchups with Georgia Tech. And those games between those three, you figure, will dictate who is the champion of the ACC. Yeah, and not only that, on here, Washington State was 21st when Louisville played them, but now they're ranked 7th and have some big wins. So all of that calculates into the funky RPI calculation, which also goes to affect how they're ranked later in the NCAA
block against the Boston College right side. Again, let's watch the serve receive. Great pass. Iko Jones on the end of those passes for Louisville, and she restores the Louisville lead out of the timeout. Jason Kennedy knows what's happening here. A little bit of a resigned look after that point. But then Louisville, once again, a service error. That's been a big theme today for both teams. Jones comes out after committing the error, replaced by Camden Tran, the true freshman. More careful serve there from Haggerty. Was that in? It was from Anna DeBeer. Kill number 13. Still a little off system on that pass, but when you have Anna DeBeer on the outside, we talked about this the other day with Anna DeBeer, and she just has that ability to step up in the moment when her team needs it. That was not an easy swing, but at a tie game, that was an Anna DeBeer swing. Might be an Anna DeBeer kind of finish for Louisville right now. They go to Looper here, and Glock just unfortunately couldn't lead Looper toward the net. And a point to Boston College on the double contact. And that was not a great decision by Glock. I think everybody thought she was going to go to DeBeer back row with that ball. It would have been the easier set. It would have been the closer set. And I think she kind of caught Looper off guard outside. So we're back even at 22. Sophia Lambros serves for BC. Blocked the bump set to DeBeer, and DeBeer blocked. Roach involved. And again, we see the strength of Boston College's serving, even if it has led to some errors down the stretch. It's paying off here, and that Louisville has not had a good, clean, three-option serve receive in the past couple balls. You see this ball had only one place to go, and that's exactly where Roach was. Cornelia Roach, the junior from Connecticut, struggled to find playing time most of her career, but a big block there. So we're in for a great finish, not just to this third set, but potentially this entire match here with Louisville and Boston College neck and neck. What are you thinking here, Steph? What is going to be a difference maker for one of these teams for Louisville to get the sweep and for Boston College to stay alive in this? Louisville, number five, swept unranked Boston College. Ho-hum, not been the case. Boston College has been very game today. Can Louisville find a solution out of the timeouts? And that one just fell through. Pressy went up to potentially block a swing, but no swing came. But again, we saw the focus there being the block. The block of Cressy is what scored that point. And now a Boston College timeout. Kennedy, the head coach, trying to ensure that this set does not slip from the grasp of his team. Mentioned that if this ends in a sweep, it would be a score that wouldn't raise any eyebrows around the country. Here's a look at what happened on Friday. And a similar game.
game to what we have here between Pitt and Duke on Friday. You look at that as a 3 0 sweep to Pitt, the ranked opponent against an unranked opponent. But Duke battled that entire match, similar to what we're seeing from BC today against number five, Louisville. Very true. And I think that Duke, Boston College, Notre Dame, Florida State, that's that all kind of that middle of the conference that we were just talking about. Even North Carolina's in there. I think that group is going to be really interesting. Beyond the three ranked ACC teams, how does that middle chunk play out this season? As ever, a big crowd at LNN Federal Credit Union Arena, and they've had a little more to cheer about maybe than they would have expected. For those that know Boston College know there's a lot of quality in that program, a lot of quality on this team, a team that lifted a trophy at the end of last season. And look, if you can end the season on a win, very few teams get to do that. And I think in postseason play, even if it's not the NCAA tournament, you learn how to grind, you learn how to battle, and you learn just that feeling of survive in advance. And I think that is so important for teams. And that's exactly why Coach Kennedy took the opportunity to play in a postseason tournament. It was the third time they did so in his six-year reign. But they're hoping to compete with the upper reaches of the ACC sooner than later. Cressy, a service error out of the timeout and a potentially vital one in the match. Boston College now a point away from claiming a set. Let's see if Louisville can put together a pass that allows Ellie Glock to have multiple options in offense. Crabtree serves an overpass from Louisville. BC goes to Schroeder. And BC takes set number three. Two sides in total. So what is in store in set four? And Elena Scott Digg is for sure. And a charity looper kill is as well. Louisville on the board to start. I think this is exactly what Louisville needs to do. Looper didn't have a great contact on the first ball, so she just got it in. They played defense, and she was patient and able to have a hole in the block and finish on the second ball. Jensen on the right side. That was in. Louisville let it go by. But Katrina Jensen continues to be the only player in double figure kills for Boston College. That's 14 on the day. That wasn't the way you would draw it up. She was falling a little bit out of system, which is why I think Louisville thought it was going to be out. But that was a great swing. 14 kills on 26 swings with just one error. That's a hitting percentage of 500 for Jensen. Points to Louisville through Iko Jones here to regain the lead. You see both teams going back to the right side early. That's been a story of both of these offenses. Schroeder not much on that swing. Cressy had a ton on that one, though. And it's another point to the Cardinals. Cressy becoming the third Cardinal in double-figure kills with 10. That's in from Schroeder. Scott and Looper on either side of where the ball ended up. Looking backward, hoping that ball sailed over the line. It was in the line. That was a really good shot. So that was an off-speed shot, but it was deep. And so that ball just dies and falls into the court. Most off-speed shots we see are shallow balls to the middle of the court or sharp cross. That was a great deep corner shot. It's a similar shot as Cressy scores off the block to one that we saw challenged by Danny Busboom Kelly early on. Yes. Kara Cressy here once again. You see the block of doing a good job of being a lot cleaner so far this set. Petri over the head to Schroeder down the line. A dig from Scott. Looper. Chance for BC from the left side. They go to Hoppus. Point 
That's a tough read for Elena Scott as libero with Hoppus being a lefty hitting off the outside. Elena Red just a little bit deeper on defense, but Hop Hoppus has that cross-court ability with her left hand from the left side of the court. And an ace for BC. Just when we talked about the need to be a little bit more clean and crisp, we have another sloppy play, a little bit of miscommunication, and a great serve from Schroeder. Camden Tran, the freshman from Northern Kentucky, unable to control it. It's back-to-back -back aces. That one rolls off the tape right behind Ellie Glock, who had turned her back to it. And Boston College back in front. The facial expressions between Schroeder and Coach Kennedy on that serve were amazing. Similar ball. Cressy reacts. But it's a point to BC. Once again, Crabtree, who's been quiet of late, that time takes care of business. But this is where we have to mention we've dogged and dogged and dogged on the serving errors. But this is where that risk reward, these last two balls have hit the tape. We're talking less than an inch of a difference from being an ace or being an error. There's DeBeer and a terrific dig from Murphy. But she ultimately couldn't keep it alive, couldn't keep it in play. Terrific effort. But Anna DeBeer the kill. Anna DeBeer's not hitting a phenomenal hitting percentage this game. 267's not shabby, but it's not necessarily an Anna DeBeer percentage. But I think. The Cardinals need to come out at some point and say, here's the difference in this match in between these two teams is that we have Anna DeBeer. And they need to use her to score in these off-system situations. Using your stars in clutch moments. That one, Looper, one of the stars for Louisville coming through, scoring off the block. You see just how close this one has been all day long. Very little to separate BC and U of L. There's an overpass and a pounding swing from Looper. Okay, Looper, I heard you. The Cardinals have Looper too, not just Anna DeBeer. Wow. An absolute hammer from Looper. Here she is again. This time takes quite a bit off of it from that last swing. Hoppus the lefty. And that was off target. But as you said, Looper had to take something off of it compared to the last one. But that's great decision making and staying within her game from her. DeBeer can take those big off system swings. That's not necessarily Looper's game. Looper has a little bit more of a speed game. She made a good decision there, keeping the ball in play and letting her defense work. There's another attack error for Boston College. That time Schroeder out of the back row. And Louisville by three. That is one of the first times we've seen a 3-0 run all day long. And it'll take us to a timeout in set four. and Hooters, the perfect pair. I'm about to raise the roof in this party, can't stop me, I'm cop. Committed by Boston College, and that's a big reason why their hitting percentage has taken a dip in set number four. Louisville on the game uncharacteristically, but for them very characteristically efficient in the fourth set. And that's part of the reason that the Cardinals are on a 3-0 run and have a 3-0, or I beg your pardon, a three-point lead. And what could be a decisive fourth set. There's Anna DeBeer out of the back row. And speaking of attacking errors, the Cardinal DeBeer commits one here. And 3-0 is our max run. That's right. For, for the match. <laughs> <laughs> it's been that kind of day. Tit for tat. Yeah. 
Nip Again, we saw three top. aces last time, so interesting how the serving speed seat. Not a great pass there from Elena Scott. And Looper, maybe she is the answer in the fourth set for Louisville offensively. She's having a strong day, and it's getting better and better as the game goes on. And that is what makes top 10 and top five teams of that caliber is when they can find ways, even on a not good pass, even out of system, they feel like they have multiple options to still take full speed quality swings at the ball. Error there for Kara Cressy, 14 on the day for Louisville. But just in time, Katrina Jensen enters back into the match for the Eagles. She's got 14 kills, hitting 500 Jensen. Sophia Lambros serves. There's PK. We haven't seen her much today. One of the leading middle blockers for this Cardinals program. It's been Hannah Sherman getting the looks alongside Kira Cressy on the afternoon. There's Jensen. And PK for Louisville. Was it touched? It was not. I think Lambros missed an opportunity during that rally to get the ball to Jensen, and Coach Kennedy definitely had a reaction about it as well. Close to a possible touch there. That serve was off the tape, and Looper makes no mistake. Charity Looper, 14 kills now, tied with DeBeer for the team lead and with Jensen for the overall game lead between either team. Camden Tran, I beg your pardon, Ellie Glock diving to the floor, hoping to deny Cornelia Roach. Great pass there from Boston College. They were able to run middle off of server seat. It was a little bit off speed from Roach, but sometimes those are even harder to get a hand on. First kill for Roach. She had a block earlier in the game. Louisville by one. Looper rising high. That one nearly scraping the ceiling on the dig. Another chance for Louisville to go to the right with Jones. Jones denied, but she's able to score off the block. Great swing here during this rally from Looper. Iko ended up being the beneficiary, but look at that swing and dig leads to the free ball so that Jones is able to finish. It was Yellen's dig that sent it high into the air. There's Jensen, that one's out. A little ways off target over the line from Katrina Jensen, one of the few times that she has been inaccurate today. Lambros left that set just a little bit off the net, and Jensen wasn't able to adjust. Point to BC for another service error from U of L. That time, Charity Looper. Looper with a pair of aces. Murphy serves. Here's Iko Jones. Haggerty with the touch. Jensen on the right side. The block took something off of that one. PK is turned back by Haggerty. Great hustle play, great swing there. I think Ellie Glock expected the middle blocker Haggerty to go bite with the outside and tried to sneak there, and Haggerty is just so disciplined. A game high ninth block for Julia Haggerty a moment ago. Service error though. Gives point, uh, the point to Louisville. Can't take your eyes off this one right now. Jensen, that time more characteristically on target. 
Jensen has had an all-American performance today. She is hitting against a huge block, the best defenders in Scott and Looper, and finding clean floor. She'll get the breather here. Well earned. But she'll have a part to play surely in the finish of this fourth set. There's Anna DeBeer. It's been Charity Looper primarily offensively in the set, but DeBeer with a double-double today. Her 15th kill to go along with 10 digs. Again, DeBeer finding a way. That was a solid double block, but Anna DeBeer on the outside can create something out of nothing. Haggerty this time. But that's out. Boston College turned to celebrate. I think Haggerty thought that was surely in. And so did Jason Kennedy, her head coach. He immediately turns to the bench and grabs his challenge card. The call was that it was out. And we'll see what happens in this challenge. But quickly, one of the things that we've talked about today is that the NCAA committee is going to announce, you know, what they see the top 10 being for the brackets and stuff. And I don't know that Louisville has performed today like they deserve a top four seed. And not to take anything away from Boston College, but a lot of that is just errors that they've created on their own. Very close. Does it catch any of that white? That's the question. I think right there you maybe see a sliver of that red paint. And it's been yet another quick challenge review. And the call remains the same. In fact, it is confirmed. And so Louisville gets the points. Each team with a challenge remaining as you see. So that's the first incorrect challenge from Boston College. To the right side, Schroeder. Scott the dig. Here's De Beer for Louisville. Murphy. And also Petri with terrific effort to try and keep it alive, but it's Anna De Beer's kill. We've talked about the offense from the right side. We've talked about finding different ways to score. But ultimately for Louisville, when it comes down to it, it's about defense and production from your stars. That might be the toughest job of them all today. With players flying around, hitting the floor, tremendous effort from both sides. That towel's had a lot of work. Louisville by four, one of the rare four-point leads we've seen this afternoon. Can they make it five? Yes. Through, who else but Anna DeVere? And Boston College is going to take a timeout to try and stem the tide. Louisville hoping to seize momentum and the match right now. And you talked about everybody flying around the court. Elena Scott having quite a day defensively. This is not an easy dig. Ball's right on Glock's forehead for her to deliver a great ball to the outside. This has become a regular meeting between Boston College and Louisville since Louisville joined the ACC several years back. But it's been all Louisville. That time since Louisville joined the conference also takes into account Louisville's ascendance to becoming one of the elite across college volleyball. And Boston College, a program similarly on the rise, but at not quite the same pace as the Cardinals. And as well as they're playing today, and as fun as this is, and I think they would want another shot at Louisville down the stretch, I also think they're probably pretty happy to not have Louisville on their schedule again in ACC play. See the all-time series 11-2. Among those 11 Louisville victories are four straight victories. Cardinals looking for a fifth consecutive against the Eagles. And Boston College has never come into this building and emerged victorious. They beat Louisville at the KFC Yum Center for their lone road victory in the series back in 2014, a long time ago now. 
And you're never happy with a loss, and it's looking like it could be a possibility for Boston College to go 0-2 on their opening weekend of ACC play. But I think one of the things coaching staff is going to be thinking is that they're playing the long game here. They have had good showings in both of these matches. They just have to find a way to find ways to win. Haggerty rattles the antenna. And Louisville has opened up by today's standards an impressive lead. It's been very close all day long. Can they continue the run and extend the lead further? Schroeder down the line. Oh, look at the effort from Pressy and Jones. And it's a point to Louisville bringing the fans out of their seats. What hustle. That's going to go down as a Louisville highlight. You don't always see Cressy and Jones being the two defenders that keep the ball inches off the ground. Those plays usually go to Looper and Scott, who are back there. But Cressy and Jones took the effort here and kept that ball in play. Sabir gets credit for the kill, her 18th. But Cressy and Jones, some digs that deserve plaudits. Here's Jones to serve with Louisville ahead by seven. And Petri just had to get it over. Here's De Beer, and it's into the net. A rare attacking error for Anna De Beer. She's taking control of the fourth set, but lost a little of that control there. Strand had a great serving run last time she was behind the line with a couple of balls that hit the tape and trickled over. Allie Schroeder there. There's Anna DeBeer, Schroeder the dig. And now BC just forced to get it over. Crabtree, a poor pass. Here's Kara Cressy into Crabtree. I think that was into Crabtree's head. When Cressy runs that slide and the ball is so high by the time that it gets to the pin, it's such an easy swing for her to have all of her options cross and line. Four players with 10 or more kills for Louisville, including Cressy. There's Crabtree. Cressy. It was not touched. Just an attack error from Kara Cressy. Again, the hitting percentages low by the season standard for Louisville, a 255 right now. And that's the point we were making during the last, when the challenge came up, and that's just that Louisville hasn't executed as a top five team today. They've had, again, no, Boston College's block has been awesome and made Louisville make some different decisions, but that's going to be the norm down the stretch when you're playing top five volleyball. But what I will say, Steph, is the mark of a good team is being able to win when you're not on your best day. Very true, very and if, true. And if Louisville can pull through with three more points in this set, that would be the case. Here's another challenge from Boston College. If it is wrong, it will be the final challenge of the day for BC. And it's a vital challenge also in terms of the swing of momentum in this set and in the match. Yeah, as you were just referencing, seven points would be by far the biggest differential we've had all day. And that's clearly, I think, out. And another short review, resulting in a confirmation of a call initially made. And BC now out of challenges, a nod of acknowledgement, and then a roll of the eye from Jason Kennedy. The frustration, I think, evident there. He's got a lot to be proud of from his team today. Let's see if they can pull something stunning off here late on in the fourth set. Jenna Pollock into the game, had that swing. And then on the other side, Crabtree able to score for BC. And just in time, Jensen re-enters the match. You see Lambros back to serve once again. Louisville still making some changes on the other side of the court. 
Boston College see, needs a run, the likes of which we haven't seen today. There's Charity Looper right to Lambros. And Lambros unable to control Looper, another kill. It's been Looper and DeBeer, the outside hitters coming up big. And that's exactly what you want. We've seen that inside ball from Looper. That's a good play that we know has been working for the Cardinals for this match. They run it right on cue, and Looper has stepped up in the fourth set. PK wasn't called into action until this fourth set. But a vital block to give Louisville a potential opportunity to clinch a victory. Boston College going to go out swinging with Jensen, and then the joust won by Roach. Louisville a point away. There's Looper out of the back row. Murphy the dig. Schroeder, an attack error will end it. Louisville wins it in four sets. But Boston College with a message to the rest of the ACC, underestimate us at your own risk. Fantastic showing today from Boston College. 